What do you say, guys? Welcome to Elephant in the Room, part of Disrupt the Media Roll Tide Pods. Make sure you like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up as we talk Alabama, Alabama football, and now Alabama basketball, if you can believe that, to the Sweet 16. So with Jake Coker, I'm Mick Gillespie. Before we even get started on anything else, let me remind you, too, that our show is brought to you by MyBookie.ag. My buddy, call him Big Sexy Elmo, went on there. He took advantage of the next round code he cashed in on the price match which is up to a thousand dollars uh 50 percent price match he said he was down to his final twenty dollars and boom hit big Run all back hit a big and more <laughs> all and more in a huge parlay so you guys can do the same thing it's a lot of fun this time of year with college basketball and the uh, tournament going on obviously the nba you got baseball starting up all that stuff mybookie.ag all right there he is jake coker uh championship qb i feel like i haven't seen you in in a long time or as my grandfather used to say a dog's age um but it really hasn't been that long <laughs> you ever heard that before haven't seen you in a dog's age i feel like age. i have i feel like i have like going going um country on you right there what a time of year yeah, man. Is well, there a better sports time of year than March Madness mm -hmm. when Alabama's playing? No, I mean, I, and I, we got to start there. Yeah, because um, this is the third time in five years that Nate Oates has gotten Bama to the Sweet Sixteen. Has that ever happened before? Um, I Alabama? think I maybe think with Wimp, Wimp? maybe you know, but I, I this is <clears throat> I, I want to say we're pretty close to things being unprecedented, and um the the ride has been rocky this year but at the end of the day like even with all of the issues and we'll talk about those they found a way to get to the sweet 16 and, and i feel like they haven't played their best game yet well we either played our best offensive game or our best defensive game which we played pretty decent you know against uh who did we play in the first round it, college of charleston yeah charleston you were down there yeah. scouting them Played played pretty well against them. <laughs> yeah. Played pretty well against them on defense early, and then not so much later on. But you know, we were up by thirty. And then last night, uh, I mean, have you ever seen a game like that? Bodies everywhere, just I mean, crazy basketball. And we, I made a comment the first five minutes. We couldn't even make a layup the first five minutes of the game. I think it was like ten to six with fourteen minutes left in the half. Uh. I hope your boy took the under last night. Yeah, I don't know. I I, I don't know what he – like what I, – I, I think he won like the Yale game. I mean, it wasn't what you would think, right? Like part of his parlay. Uh, but <laughs> – He's the kind of guy that bets like Holy Cross. Yeah, right, basketball. right. <laughs> he's, lo he, he's looking for the edge. <laughs> yeah. uh, I thought that the officiating was terrible. And I, I said this um, on the morning show that I was a guest on down here in Mobile this morning. And I'll, I'll reiterate it. I thought that the officiating stunk, and it even stunk for Auburn. I thought that those guys did a bad <clears throat> job down there and, and that Alabama weathered the storm of, you know, being hacked at the basket. And then the, the only reason that they won is because all of the free throws that, that the other team got um, – and missed yeah grand canyon they just missed all those free throws they could they would not leave them uh they would put them on the line every chance they got oh, yeah. they just didn't take advantage of well, it I, I mean i think grand canyon almost forced forced the referee's hand because i, I mean you know they were hammering us every time all the time yeah if had you been calling a a tight refereed game yeah they'd all fouled out i know that's what i'm saying they, they were going under the assumption that we're going to hack the shit out of these guys and if they're not going to call it and I, I remember there was a point where bama was like two of 12 uh, on layups and i'm going back and i'm watching it and guys are getting like hit from behind and pushed oh, and yeah. bodied but and it affected us too because even the ones that we should have made were you know we're worried about it getting blocked or getting hit and yeah. just trying to throw it up there instead of going strong and and finishing uh I mean, it definitely got in our heads, and it's not its not going to be any easier Thursday night. Well, see, I think the Thursday will be different, though. I, I, I think it could It'll be, be cleaner. a 120-118 well. final type game, you know? like Yeah, like 
I, I just don't think that it's going to be one of those situations where the, I mean, the officiating can't be worse. And it's really amazing to me that Alabama won because that officiating was so poor. And I guess it was poor both ways, but it seemed like they got away with a lot of hitting. There were some, I mean, there were, t the problem is, is, is that every now and then there'd be a ticky tack foul. And then, and then you're just letting guys bludgeon each other underneath the, <laughs> yeah, underneath right. the rim on the other side. Yeah, yeah right. Like, right. A street, I've heard people call it a street fight. <laughs> <laughs> roller derby. I was uh, calling it roller derby. Yeah, there I, was yeah there was times Estrada. I mean, particularly I remember Estrada getting hammered down low multiple times, and then I mean, I, Pringle one on one of those plays. He, I mean, it was an all out assault on on Grand Canyon. Yeah, and uh, I mean, they didn't call anything, so it's kind of hard to complain when you see it on both sides. But you know, every now and then there'd be some ticky tack stuff, and they even mentioned that in the broadcast. But. Uh, you know, basketball is the worst when there's no standard of it was like John Lieber's in here talking about the home plate umpire. Like if the zone's outside then you kind of know, and you can stick to it. I mean, if, if you're calling it soft or you got to keep it, keep the standard where it's at. Right. So we know where we are. Yeah. The, te the, uh, the technical fouls at the beginning of the game, uh, I was as frustrated as Nate Oates. Love Nate Oates. Guy, what the guy's doing really is uh, something. I mean, just to put Alabama back in the Sweet 16, they win one more game, and it's as far as they've ever got. Yeah. You know, they win two more, and, I mean, they've never done that before. I was about – yeah, yeah. We went to the Elite Eight, what, in 0-2? Oh, 0-4. Oh, 0-4. Oh, four. Okay. Won the SEC in 0-2, went to the Elite Eight in 0-4. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's been a while. Well, uh, I, I got, you know, I was kind of an aside to an argument, uh, yesterday about the amount of fouls that should be allowed in college basketball. Do you think, do you think there should be a, an amendment to five fouls within the game? Keep it the same, change it. I think it's annoying as hell that a ref can kind of ruin a basketball game right now. I think like I, I've said this before. I, I do feel like there's bias in officiating. I think some of them do a really good job, but if there is, once there's bias, it's easy for them to control the outcome of a game with the fouls that they call. And I'm not saying that was the case on, you know, yesterday. I, I, I just, I agree with you. I mean, I think that there's, I mean, we've seen it already. There was an NBA ref that got basically put in jail for, you know, for, for throwing games. I mean, uh, have you seen that documentary? Uh, I, I remember. Tim Donaghy, yeah. Yeah, I remember when it was happening. And I mean, he openly states that, well, first off, that he wasn't the only one gambling. And then secondly, he's like, if I had a grudge against a player, Allen Iverson being yeah, one of them, yeah. he's like, he used to carry a little bit, and I knew that going in the game. He had, you know, gotten on my ass before, and I wasn't having it. So every time he carried, I'd blow that whistle until he stopped. You know? <laughs> yeah. And I mean, you just, and, and he's communicating during that, that documentary, like there's a lot more guys doing it than just him. Yeah, no, I agree. Well, he knew the other biases too, that the officials had, he knew who they didn't like. Yeah. Oh yeah. So they would, he would just play into that. Um, the, the game that really changed my opinion on all of this. And, you know, I've talked about this a lot is that Tennessee football game from, from a couple years ago. I, I still just don't buy that. I don't buy it. I, I, I just felt like the entire game was, was bullshit. And, and I look back now and I still think that now, <laughs> do I have any proof? No, but it I, it makes you wonder, but it, but when the, the second time I watched it was worse than the first time I watched it. <laughs> yeah. I, I ran into uh will Muschamp down at uh, QB country. A few, I guess it was last year. And uh, when we played in the Iron Bowl, there was a personal foul call. I was running towards the sideline, get hit out of bounds, you know, flying to the bench. They throw a 15 yard penalty, and he's all angry about it. I mean, cussing the refs out as, you know, like Will Muschamp does. Yeah. I think I remember that. They tack on another 15 I yards. I think I remember that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so, uh, <laughs> When I, when I see him, you know, we, I, I knew who he was. He looks up, he recognizes me and we walk up and talk. And I was like, 
Last time I saw you, you were mo- motherfucking referees on the opposite <laughs> sideline. <laughs> <laughs> and he laughed. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he laughed so hard. He goes, "Yeah." He said, "I knew what those referees were up to. Yeah, they all work out of that Birmingham office." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe the other people feel that way. No, about I, mean, us. He's, he's I know, you know. But you know what I'm saying? Because I've heard people say for years, like we get all the calls and stuff. I just figured we were better. You know, I, I don't. I, I guess I, I don't know if I'm objective enough to watch and go oh man we're getting all the calls today yeah you know but i knew when we weren't getting them in that tennessee game and it was so <laughs> damn obvious when bryce young got hit like um that was like i mean you're like Wait what a are we even doing here you guys sent out a memo that said if you went in head first that was one if you hit the quarterback it was one like, <laughs> and then you guys just wave it off i, I mean come on to review that to look at it and say that's not that is textbook that's textbook and i'm not a big helmet to helmet guy like i you know you like that i i think it it's it's like to me it's like uh we're we're, you know we're talking to john about the elbow pad on you know while you're up the bat like it's just a safeguard it it kind of ruins the integrity of the game like if you're if you're not worried about that then you know, back in the day, you used to be afraid to throw over the middle. You used to be afraid to th- throw in certain spots because you'd get a guy really hurt. And that was just part of the game. You you learn to play around it. But, you know, now, again, players, it kind of ruins games, too. Guys are worried about tackling them a certain way, and you can't even avoid some of these hits. Yeah. You get thrown out of the game. So, uh, I mean, it's kind of diminished the integrity of the game, but you know, it's still college football and we all love it. So I'll, I'll never stop watching, but, uh, it's definitely taken away a little bit of just that, the purity. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, and then you wonder like with all of the availability of, of gambling and, and how easy it would be for someone to make a mint if they were in a position to affect the outcome, why that wouldn't happen. I mean, we know it would. I mean, holds pass interference. I mean, it's all up for interpretation. uh, Yeah. Right. You could call hold every play. Yeah. You know, you see some of the ones that come back. The thing about a referee is that nobody really knows who they are. They just blame the refs and they move to the next game, you know, when people, and and that's true. But when people start knowing like, cause, cause we'll, I have people that watch my channel and it'll be like, you know, holy shit, so-and-so is doing it. And then they're right. And you're like, man, how, how did they know that? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, well, there's know, that one, what's his name? Angel. Oh, no, Angel it? Hernandez. Yes. Baseball. Yeah, the and worst, he's just terrible. Now, he is infamously known. He's for, so bad. I mean, he is the worst MLB umpire of all time. And there's not a, no doubt about it. But I don't think that he's terrible because of bias. I think he's just terrible. <laughs> you know, like. Like and the I, worst thing about him is when he makes a bad call and somebody cusses him out. Yeah. It's like he doubles down on it and throws somebody out of the game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Baseball, I mean, look, I've spent my life in baseball. The thing that I don't understand, and I'm I'm all about the robot up. And people get on to me, but I, I was in a series in 2009, a championship series, where an umpire didn't like Ryan Sandberg. He was a manager, Hall of Famer. He's got cancer right now, by the way, guys, so pray for him. And a good friend of mine, Hall of Famer. But this guy's name is uh, Chris Ward. I think his name was. They had it. They had this beef, right? That was from the lower minors. And and Rhino had a tendency to say things and yell and get thrown out of games. And this guy didn't like him. And people were emailing me before the series started. And they're like, did you see that he's the crew chief? And the very first game, it was so bad. Like to the point where I realized that's when I realized that, look, man, you got to treat these guys with respect because it will come back to haunt you. Oh, yeah. And there there were like three or four plays at the end of that game where they weren't like the, the, the t- our team was about to win and they wouldn't call strike three. Then there was a play at first base where they brought the team. They called the guy out and then brought the teams back in um, during, you know, like after they'd already gone into the dugout. And and really, long story short, it just comes down to you like the they're people, and 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 they used to be. I, I feel like back in the day, there was a lot more integrity on you know, hey, look, you know what, we're we're an umpire, and 
we want to make sure we get this right. And I, and I just kind of feel like now in the internet age, you know, like you go out there and you get in somebody's face and it goes around on, and it goes viral on the net. <laughs> They're going to remember that shit. <laughs> you know, I mean, maybe the times I, are different now. Yeah, I like, mean, <laughs> you know, people used to be able to take, you know, getting their ass chewed. And I mean, that would just was, I feel like everyday life back then. There was a there was a feud between a guy named Earl Weaver and an umpire named Ron Luciano. And it was the same type of thing, right? Earl and Luciano hated each other, like Chris Ward and Ryan Sandberg. But Earl Weaver said that he, he said that he that's one umpire that was worth going to see. Like later on down the line. Yeah. You know, and tragically. Luciano, who I think was a college football player, maybe lacrosse, play, did something at Syracuse, uh, and was that he threw he threw Earl Weaver out both ends of a doubleheader, same day, like threw him out in the first game. <laughs> Earl goes out to get the lineup card, and he threw him out again. <laughs> That's almost theatrical. Yeah, it was, yeah. Earl was like you know like five foot three, you know, <laughs> climbing your ass type guy, you know, and Lu Luciano's it's big guy. But I, I don't know. I mean, you can go online and look, watch the videos, but um, I, I don't think that it was the same situation that I saw. And part of it is that when you're managing in baseball, and, and I don't, I guess it's kind of the same thing with Nick Saban. I always thought that Nick Saban was really smart about the way that he dealt with officials because he never criticized them. And he would always, even when he, you could tell he wanted to criticize, he wouldn't do it, right? Oh, yeah. Hey, they got a tough job. My dad was an official. You know, like he, he was really smart about the way that he would say, Hey, and then, and then honestly, after that Tennessee game, which I still question, there wasn't a whole lot of penalties called on us this year. So maybe uh, there were a lot of, a lot of, we got like three lot, penalties, there was a called. lot of tape sent back to the SEC office that week. <laughs> you know, I mean, well, the, I'm talking about this year, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Like oh, we yeah. had three penalties for the whole game. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. Right. Maybe there's make makeup. I don't know, but um uh I mean I think Coach Saban's very calculated in who when he chews somebody out. You know, I mean right. you don't see him losing on an official hardly at all unless he's absolutely right. Yeah, right. For the most part, you know. Uh and he would never say anything bad about the guy publicly. Oh yeah, I now, mean he was going to have a conversation. He he knows those guys. I he mean, would talk to him, right? Oh yeah, I mean those referees, much like any other school. I mean, you have them into your school. They come in and they do scrimmages, and and uh, you know they get to know know the team, or I mean, not really well, but get to know them a little bit, get yeah. some familiarity there. Um, so those guys are around a lot, you know, but. <clears throat> I mean, at the same token, I did see him tear him up pretty good. <laughs> well, he'd get him on the field. But like I said, oh, yeah, but like I said, I mean, usually when he was doing that, he was right. Yeah. Uh, gosh, I remember there's something that happened. Oh, uh, well, I guess it was when we were playing in the Iron Bowl and it was fourth and one and they had an, an extra guy on the field. And he ripped his headset off, was running down there, just cussing him like, where's the flag? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> and then they had another, like the play before that, I think they they wouldn't spot the ball. There was something going on where we, it took forever. We No, we we ran a quarterback sneak and got the first down, and they didn't, they didn't, they can't, pretty much canceled the play and made us run fourth down over again. Yeah. And then they had an extra guy on the field. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, those are those are things that could affect the outcome of a game. Oh yeah, well, it was a total referee screw up. Yeah. The reason it didn't that first right. play didn't count. So uh, this isn't. I'm not saying this just because uh, Chris Stewart's part of our disrupt the media and Roll Tide Pods family, but uh, I I would have loved to have had their broadcast. Because I, I thought the broadcast was terrible. It was hard for me to sit there and listen to those guys. I, I you know, I, I, you would expect that at this level of athletic events that you'd have an Ian Eagle or a Kevin Harlan in every area. That 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 was painful. I mean, I don't know what was worse to me, 
the broadcast of the game or the officiating. But it was, <laughs> I felt like I was being double teamed with just turds. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was it just like it, it, the, the game couldn't end fast enough. <laughs> I'm watching them shoot free throws, us get attacked at the basket, and then listening to people. My whole thing on broadcasting is I want to to be there. I want people to sound like someone I just sit at a bar with and have a beer. Uh, and I'm the same way. And, yeah. and if and I none of them were people I'd want to hang out with. <laughs> God, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm just telling you it was, and it was both games. Like even the, the Charleston game, I'm like, the, is this really the best we can do? I don't even remember who was on the Charleston game. I didn't really remember crew. much from last. I mean, I wasn't I just what, well, I guess it's everybody in, uh, Spokane, huh? It was the Spokane region. Yeah. So they're, yeah. they're on all the games out, mm-hmm. out of there. Yeah. That same crew. Well, where, do we play in LA or Brooklyn? We play in LA. Okay. So I guess we just flew straight to LA. Didn't go back to Tuscaloosa. No, we're all. we're in LA. Yeah. Are we going Eight to the game? game? I think. Want to go? I'll stay out of LA. <laughs> <laughs> back in LA. Last time we were there, we lost the Rose Bowl. Oh. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I, I just, I just found that the, all, everything about it, except the, the Alabama won. But, and I'm not one of these guys that picks on broadcasters. I mean, I know how tough it is, but there's 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 levels of doing this job yeah and and that those people don't have the level of expertise to be on that call they need to be doing something else and not that game you know you need to have your best of the best there and that's not what we had and you sit there and you're trying to listen to the game and it's like are these guys like the grand canyon broadcast team or something like you know what i mean like they're they're clearly they want the upset you know, <laughs> we hit a three. It's like they talk through it like it's a podcast. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like, <laughs> what are we doing here? Yeah. You know, no, they were, I, I think they were all riled up by the GCU fans. I didn't, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a whole you, other topic, too. Let me tell you, I didn't even know. Uh, hell, I thought GCU was an online platform, to be honest with you. I mean, because you see all those commercials. Are you taking a shot at that? I am, I guess. I'll tell you, man. And th- you know what? I knew that they were a great program when I saw the way that they stomped Joshua Tree and they beat Yosemite this year. <laughs> <laughs> I just know where you're going. <laughs> I knew halfway when, through that. You're <laughs> they beat Yellowstone twice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Like, they had the best. Yeah, they they be <laughs> Josh, the, the Joshua, Joshua Tree, the best park rangers they have. On staff. <laughs> yeah, Coach Yogi Bear. <laughs> like I, I don't know. Like I, I know they're good, and some people would. You know, that's not the first time I've made that joke. People were concerned that we would lose because of that. Um, I don't care. Oh, that's what we went through the last podcast. The I mean the College of Charleston. They hadn't played any home run hitters. You no. Know? Mm-hmm. Uh, at least hadn't beaten anybody. No, uh, we. The the funny thing about that it was um, <laughs> we we're we're up like we could have scored 130. You know, oh, like we're yeah. like got 100 points with like eight minutes left. Seven, scored like minutes. 10 points in the last five. Yeah, minutes yeah. And then we left. and then all of a sudden like we we just stopped playing defense and it gets to like I'm thinking every the, all the gamblers are like you got to be shitting me like you know <laughs> got real close we still covered <laughs> but um I don't know so I I. I felt like the defense was there, but then this last game, they played their asses off defensively, man. I got to give them that's credit. That's all like, I wanted to see all year. Yeah, it was so good watching. Care less that. if you, I mean, I'd hope you win, but if you lose that way, I can at least handle that, you know? Yeah. I mean, it was good to see finally, you know, and I saw some guys, uh, you know, they were, they were fired up. I, I know Reitzel, I saw an interview with him. Uh, where he was, you know, talking about all everybody, how everybody had doubted them all year, and they just want to prove that they can play defense. Yeah, and, and he, I mean, he's been playing hard. Nate needs to work on that glass chin of his. But <laughs> well, I think he, I don't know I if mean, he's going to play anymore. I mean, I feel it's two concussions this year. I, I, I just I think it's see what caused it the other night. I mean, he, I saw the, I saw the replay three times. Guy elbowed him on, on the way down, and, and that was another one of those fouls that you could call a, a foul on that. Like, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, and the guy stepped. Well, I he did step on his foot, and you're not supposed to get in the landing zone of the three point shooter. Yeah, then maybe I don't know, but he he got knocked out, and 
you 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 have to look at your long term health and you you go through a second concussion if that's what it was i don't know i i would probably hang it up it's crazy for basketball i know but i'd i mean at least for the year i mean i and as much as painful as that is you got to think about your long-term health man and and it just seemed like everywhere he was like his head just kept getting hit like he got got you the, the you nose. Get so many sweet 16 opportunities uh, <laughs> <look at you. laughs> he's not wearing a helmet I'd like playing you know. i'd be playing <laughs> <laughs> you want you want to refill yeah, over yeah, here? i'll take one yeah i think i'm pouring great beers right now <laughs> um yeah so well i mean I, yeah give me another we'll just yeah give me another beer we'll pr keep promoting ct <laughs> <laughs> did you ever have a concussion uh not diagnosed that i know of uh you know it's like that i, I think i've told you about playing arkansas and uh, i threw two interceptions that game and uh i remember being a little woozy and i didn't like all the so yes i had to have had one but the details of the game weren't clear and i i go in for the uh post game press conference Somebody asked me, they say, what's your name? And you're, <laughs> no, they were like, I don't know. They were like, uh, so what happened on that second interception? What'd you see? I was like, didn't know I threw two interceptions. <laughs> 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 Had no idea. <laughs> Did you say that? Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> it wasn't me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. I don't know. I mean, heck it could have. It, I said it, so I guess it was, you know. What if you'd have been like, you must be talking about Cooper? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got I got one uh, playing club lacrosse at Alabama against the Georgia Tech. I, I I went down to pick up the ball, and I and it, this little dude hit me. And um, honestly, I thought everything was fine until I was running through the middle of the bench. You know, <laughs> like I, I'm running and I'm thinking I'm in the middle of the field and I'm like on the side. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like, all right, and now my helmet's off, my stick's gone. <laughs> you sitting down here. <laughs> like, like I'm running full speed and, <laughs> and everybody's in my way. <laughs> yeah. Time to get him out. Yeah. Right. Right. Like, yeah. Uh... And then they're like, they're like, I told you to keep your head up. <laughs> keep your head up. <laughs> okay, I'll keep it up from now on. Uh, no, but if I, I, I mean, I'm honestly not kidding. You know, if I'm Nick Reitzel, I think it's Nick, it's, it's Reitzel. Yeah, Reitzel. And I, I mean, I'd be playing in that game. You'd want to play. I, I, I just, I don't know, man. I, I unless I just got to see what, the, how, if it is another concussion because just the long-term effects of those concussions but if so it was football i mean you know it's, it's like uh i don't know if you've sent like teddy bridgewater it was time for him to call it a day like was he it? was getting knocked out cold and just for i mean well two like, went through it remember oh yeah i mean i didn't know I, if he was ever i'd be a little again. worried about him too uh but I, reitzel's a senior i mean this is his last last his go, last go. you don't know if he'll be playing again after this or not and uh i mean again i if i was playing and i would i could function i'd i'd be playing you just it's a once in a lifetime opportunity and you're looking at it like that i get that um again if he decides not to you can respect that yeah too, yeah no you know? i'm with you um how about well let me let me just bring up this guy's name uh mark sears oh Man, he proved to be an All American last night. Yeah, he did, man. He, he was the only was, guy playing. I mean, he was on a different level than everybody else. Oh yeah, oh yeah, just grinding the yeah. whole game, and, leading. Uh, yeah, I mean, you could tell everybody was feeding off of him. Everybody respects him on that team. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, just cramping up at the end of the game, can't hardly walk. Yeah, you know. And Nate Oates, I saw him after the game. You know. They played like 40 minutes, like 39 minutes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's like, he willed us to win. Yeah, that's absolutely true. I don't mm -hmm. know how the guy doesn't get more respect than he does. I think mm -hmm. it's just because Alabama's kind of been that upper mid-tier team yeah. all season long, and it's hard to believe that, that he can be that productive. Yeah. Well, he's – I mean, 
one more win. And I mean, he's going down as, you know, leading the team. Uh, he's to, an Alabama legend already. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, Just, I mean, that game last night, it was something. Know. And again, it wasn't the prettiest game. I mean, it was, that was at times hard to watch, but I mean, at the same time, it was a hard game listen. with that much physicality. Yeah. I mean, no, I'll watch that over an NBA game any day of the week. Yeah, no, it was good. Uh, Mo Diabate, I thought. Oh, he my gosh. Had some huge. He was a savior, too. Yeah, some huge buckets, man. Like, just, you know, when making it, plays, rebounds. Yeah. yeah. You know, mm -hmm. the, the guys blocking shots. And, you know, it, it was, uh, you know, it was, it was really like, it was, it was good to see. Um, that those guys didn't weren't going to lose, you know. Did you see what uh, Charles Barkley said after the game? It's kind of some of the stupidest basketball he's ever seen. He's <laughs> yeah. like besides besides Sears, you know. Like, <laughs> and uh, well, they were all like, he, he was he congratulated Alabama University. <laughs> 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 I I I gotta tell you, man, I I like him. Uh, I, I I I can't. I think he's funny. I I, I genuinely like him. Uh, he's one of the smartest dumb guys I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> he's just no. I love Charles Barkley. He's he I makes mean, it, man. Him, him on the NBA with Shaq and the other guys. I know. love it when he makes a comment and Shaq's over there like. There was one last night. I'm not even going to bring up on this on the podcast. But he said something last night, and Shaq just. <laughs> <laughs> do you uh what do you think about uh shack's pizza the shackaroni are you a fan of the shackaroni never had it okay. never had it well I, which I, I like papa john's too i, I ordered some shackaronis for my last football party fantastic <laughs> you know you you can't lend your name to a pizza and it not be well, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. he's got to make sure that that has been that is a great you know, it was a great pizza and I love Papa John's. All right. Anyway, but let's, let's get back to the, the important stuff here. So what do you think? Uh, well, you've already told me you know it. But just throw it out. I know what you're going to say. So the line for the Alabama I was game. I, honestly, I was surprised that it was three and a half. I was surprised. I thought that. And, oh, well, look at that smile. So where did you think it was? I figured it would be like eight Carolina. I love it. Yeah. I love it. So what does that tell you? It says. It says all all the the Joe Publics, all the Mick Gillespies, they're going to be in North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him, <laughs> Joe Publix. Thanks. <laughs> no, just sell. <laughs> uh, no, but, I mean you know my my football picks this year for the most part. If I saw a line and I was like, that is, I mean, just way, I mean, that's an obvious North UNC line, right? right. Like you got it. If you're just, if you don't think about Vegas, you don't think about their approach to things, then you have to think, okay, I mean, UNC is a, a no brainer. Let's put 10 grand on them. Yeah. You right. Know? I mm -hmm. mean, three and a half. Are you kidding me? After the, and if you'd watch that last game, but I honestly, I feel good about Alabama. I, I, I think that it could be a you know one twenty to one eighteen final. But I, I, I think I'll, I think that first off, I don't think that the officiating will be like what we saw in Spoke Spokane. I, I think it'll be better. I think they'll they'll let the teams run, yeah. it, and there'll be better players. You know, like Grand Canyon had some guys that could play a little bit, but. Those players weren't that good. They were okay, you know, not compared I mean, to what you Alabama get. If Alabama lost to them, it would have been a real disappointment. Right, right. I mean, know? like, no, no, who on that team stood out where you're like, oh, this guy's really better than anybody we have? I looked at that that team and I'm like, we're better than them in every position. Yeah. It, now, the only thing that scared me about that game was, well, I, you know, I mean, we played good defense, but when we had a team that tried to rough us up, it seemed like we were frantic outside of sears mm -hmm. frantic to get the ball out of our hands because we didn't want to get we didn't want to turn the ball over we got nervous in that physical environment uh that kind of stood out to me i mean the ball just there wasn't a whole lot of ball security anymore uh again they're they're looking for mark to save us yeah you know? right 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 and and against north carolina i mean i don't think it's going to be that type of game it's not gonna be a hatchet game mm -hmm. but if we can't stop Baycott, you know, their big guy, 
That's the guy I'm worried about. Yeah, and we're going to have trouble doing that. A Pringle's going to have to show up and just be a monster. Because mm -hmm. I don't think, and I, Grant Nelson, I thought, played a pretty good game. I mean, again, it was sloppy by all accounts, but. Uh, Turned it over a lot, though. Yeah, I don't think he's physical enough to stop Baycott. I think he's going to get back down and and bullied yeah i didn't think I just, he played I want him to well. show up i want this to be yeah. his game but i just don't know if he's got the physical presence to, to stand there and you know beat up on him i knew you were you know if he had a if if we got that you said if we got to the final four you would grow a grant nelson mustache and i was so i've been pulling for him but it you know like it almost felt like he was overmatched a little bit, <laughs> kind of like that stash of his. Yeah, I'd rather I'm a have stash the, guy. I'd rather have the Sears fro. Did you? Yeah, or the Sears haircut, whatever that is. Yeah, yeah. No, I like that. And it's Sears's mom. I've become a huge fan of hers. No, oh, yeah. I like watching her in the stands <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> she gets after. It. She does, man. I. She just seems like somebody that'd be fun to hang out with. <laughs> yeah, you know, we, we were talking about that all the both games. You know. <laughs> yeah. She's like a, this seems like a real fun lady, you know. He like, says he can hear her screaming. I in love the, it. In the, in the stands. Well, and that and that kind of leads me to the final thought on basketball is, uh, you know, Auburn's got the new arena and they're camping out for their tickets, and they got a good coach and and Bruce Pearl and and they they haven't gotten to the Sweet Sixteen since they what went to the Final Four, right? So yeah. it's been five years. So Bama's back there for a third time. Kentucky. You know, the amount of money they spend on basketball, they get, you know, their coach, they get the, the history, and they can't even win an SEC tournament game, right? You know, I, that movement to get him out of there is getting stronger and stronger. They don't have the money. I don't think they do. 30, either. 33 million. He's, he's not going anywhere. They're stuck with him. But, you know, but what, what I'm saying is, is that Alabama fans, we've got to start supporting basketball better than we have been. We, we really do. You know, like we don't talk enough basketball. We don't, we don't pack the Coliseum, you know, it, you're watching grand Canyon, right. And they score and they, they got a camera on their gym and there's a bunch of people in there yeah. che cheering and celebrating. And, and I'm like, well, where's the, Alabama's the camera? stadium itself was where, packed. Out yeah. Where's cool. ours at? Well, because we don't have that. Because I don't know that there's a demand for that yet. And I'm putting myself in this too. I'm not saying, hey, it's you guys. I'm saying it's us. Like, yeah. like we have something special right now with Nate Oates. Now, I know that there were years and years of mediocre basketball, like, like kind of like where the women are, where it's like you make the tournament and you feel like you won a national championship. Yeah. You know, now mm -hmm. the men have a coach that recruits – at the elite level, you know, you get four and five star players consistently. You play the style of basketball that a lot of the best players want to play. They want to get up and down the court. They want to shoot the ball. Oh, yeah. it, it feels like it's NBA style. And um, and now you're you're you know, you're in the sweet 16, three out of five years, which is elite stuff. And I think I think part of it, and we've talked about this, is that Coleman Coliseum is a it's a dump man it just is it's compared to every other gym in in the league it's way below standards and then for a program that wants to be you know a national championship program yeah. it just isn't good enough like it, it just isn't we could sit around and talk about it it's the way that the seats are aligned it's it's the fact that it doesn't have luxury Dark. boxes looks, i mean it's depressing in it's, there a yeah little bit. right it it feels like and I hate a to place say that. Well, you know, and I look, I graduated from there. I, I was there and I was on the court the last time I think we rushed the court. I started it 2002 when we won the SEC. <laughs> so, I mean, I, 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 I've had some great times there. I'll say this. Too, I mean, I was at that Alabama Auburn game last year when we came back and won. Yeah, and you that went. That was awesome. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, yeah, the stadium, it was electric in there, mm -hmm. you know. But it just needs, the, the, the place needs it. It, it definitely it, it needs to be modernized, dy sure. dynamited, you know, <laughs> and build a new one. But with that said, we we might not have that. Some people say it's because Oates wants that money to go to NIL. But here nor there, we've just got to support this basketball. Program I was about to better. say that's it, all it comes at the end down of to. The day, now we've got our basketball coach Saban. Yeah, and 
whatever Nate Oates wants, he needs to get. Yeah. And, and that, if it's not the Coliseum, you need to everybody the Greg Byrne needs to take a big sigh of relief and say, okay, here, take it and pay the players. <laughs> yeah, right, right. I think I just don't know that you can do anything with that place. You just gotta figure out something else. They gotta be creative, you know, whatever that means. But uh, but we also need to do to do our part, you know. Yeah. Um you'll watch games and it'll be game like you know, it'll be like games maybe not you know premier games but some of the games and you look in there and half the place is empty oh yeah you know like the and i I get it who wants to sit way the hell up there in those nosebleed seats you know that are slanted back you feel like you got a better view on tv but we got to do it that's what we have that all basketball arenas were built no that day no man i i I mean cameron indoors one of the best uh, much smaller venue than than coleman and it slopes up i've been there before uh, Maryland had a, a gym that was big called Cold Field House, but you were right on the action. Like it was, it was built in a way where, yeah, you know, like you you, you went up instead of all the way out. Yeah, and then they built a new one, and you know, and then they haven't won since. But you know, but I don't know. I just feel like it, it's kind of the next step in the program. But he just signed an extension, and he's going to be a you know, like he's he's. I think he loves Tuscaloosa. I think his uh, his kids love Tuscaloosa from what I hear. I'm I if I'm him, you know, I I'm probably in Louisville right now. You know, I mean, you you go there, you got all the you got all the money, you got you got the NIL, you got the building. Everybody in the town cares about basketball. The whole city is in love with basketball. Yeah, you know, but at the same time, uh, I, you, you speaking with your heart right now? I, I am a little bit, but I mean, at the same time, it'd be hard to beat being the savior of a program being looked at as i mean for him he can do no wrong and at, at alabama i mean he is the best that we've had since i mean who would well yeah i mean since when, yeah uh i mean he's got it made his for again from what i hear his family loves it there you can build a strong foundation and possibly a dynasty if you stay stick yeah. around long enough right uh I mean, but can you win a championship should have won one last year had the infrastructure to do it last had year. had the had the had the, the squad to do it and i mean so to me last year proved that we could you could get the team to because do it. we had the best team yeah. to me we had we at least had you know arguably the best talent in the country we mm-hmm. just had a bad game yeah um so and, i mean i think it's definitely doable okay uh, well, Florida won back to back, you know, but their gym's better than ours, you know. But not, but they also had a great coach and Billy Donovan. Here, here's the thing: we he built, and we that, got a great coach. He built that team last year with what we had. I mean, mm-hmm. now again, if he was at Kentucky or somewhere else, I can't imagine what he would do. He'd have five Brandon Millers. Yeah. I mean, it, and that's what my point is. Now, I'm glad he's staying. Um, I think it's funny that. Um, and not but only again, did he get a raise, but Greg Byrne kind of hooked himself up with a little extra cash yeah. too. <laughs> but that's that's how it goes, you know. But I mean, Calipari, you know, he's you know the best coach. That's I mean, a lot of people at at one time were you know thought he walked on water, and now he's on the hot seat at Kentucky. Yeah, because because he, he's not winning. Like you have a few that, bad that stretches. game was. Well, I was texting you though that game, a few bad stretches. They look like that. No, that no, no, was, no, no. I'm saying you have a few bad stre- stretches like annually. Oh, yeah, right. But that game, that game was awful. Did you watch the end of that Kentucky game? No, I never game? saw that game. I oh, man, busy. that's why you didn't text me back. I was like watching. They're down four with like 20-some seconds left. You don't have to heave up a freaking three. Just get two and play defense. Yeah. And if you don't get them, foul them and then start over again. Like w- w- the, the guy gets the ball and shoots like a half-court three that missed and the game's over. And I'm going, yeah. how, how – this is Kentucky. Absolute nightmare. Awesome. You know what else drives, drives me crazy is the – right before halftime, I can't stand it when teams hold the ball till there's five seconds. And then and don't get a shot. Get one shot. Yeah, yeah, right. Maybe. Like, shoot with eight seconds, possibly get an offensive rebound yeah, right. and put it back up. Because, I mean, I – Somebody's going to shoot a buzzer beat or whatever. Let them have it. Yeah. But at least give me a chance to take a good shot, possibly get an offensive rebound. Were you one of those guys when you used to play basketball that would get that tip back? I could see you in the paint. 
I got a lot of rebounds in my day. Yeah, like some putbacks in there, and then the only way you're going to get them is if you have enough time to do it. Yeah, uh, yeah, I had a lot of re- I had a lot of rebounds in my day. Okay, well, that's I I I, I love Nate Oates and I love what he's doing, and I honestly I it still can't really believe it. You know, like, oh, I can't either. Just oh, like he got hired. By. Everybody was like, "Oh, what is, what are we doing here?" You know? <laughs> know. Avery, John- I was, I was one of those. Avery people. Johnson for <laughs> Fluffopotamus told but, me. Well, like, nobody knew anything about Nate at the time. I know. You know, I mean, guy from Buffalo. That I mean, all you heard was he was, you know, a high school coach and teacher a few years ago. And not that that's a bad thing at all, but it's just weird to hear that that was in the recent past, and then all of a sudden he's the head coach at Alabama. I mean, but he's killing it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Great. I guess, you know, I wonder how much, I know he's a big analytics guy Mm -hmm. and I guess he looks at all these calculations and figures out what the, the most optimal rate of shots. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I'd, I'd love to hear, hear his philosophy on all that because it has to play a pretty big role in, in what he's doing. Yeah, no. I, I I think we're blessed to have him and a big roll tied to him, and he's worth every penny he's getting paid. And He's the money ball of college basketball. He's he's getting it done. And, uh, you know, they're, they're getting players in the transfer portal already for next year. And the, 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 somehow, man, like Bama basketball is legitimately a better program than Kentucky. Which to me is crazy, yeah. you know, and and I and I feel like uh, Alabama and Auburn, yeah, and Auburn. I and I and I'm say this again, and I'm not, I can't believe I'm taking up for Auburn, but I felt like they got hosed with the officiating in their game, and I've kind of felt like they were doing the same thing to us, and and I feel bad for them. I, I I'm not one of these guys that like once we get in the tournament, as much as I might hate Auburn. I want all the SEC teams to win because yeah. it, it makes the whole conference. I mean, good. I mean, when they made it to the Final Four, I mean, I thought they got hosed that year. They did. They got the foul on the three. Oh yeah, shot. yeah. I did. They did. Uh, I mean, that that Auburn team was one of the most exciting college basketball teams to watch. Yeah. Uh, as much as I hate to say it. Well, they they but what happens is is that they get good and it forces us to be good. Yeah. And and I love that's that's the best part about having a rival in your state. You know, because yeah. we're not going to just sit there and let them run anything. It just yeah. ain't going to happen. Yeah. You know, cause, um, so, uh, so anyway, they play Thursday. Uh, we'll, we're, we're doing another show before then. We'll kind of preview the uh, Alabama, North Carolina game, but Sweet 16. And who knows? Maybe this is the year. Minus three and a half or plus three and a half. Would have never thought it'd been that low. So I'm feeling. Better about it than I would if, if the line was 10. Okay. All right. Well, good. All right. We'll talk more about that next show. Um, Alabama football. Still have a football team. And uh, Kalen DeBoer killing it on the recruiting trail. Four four-star – no, three four-star prospects uh, committed to Alabama last week. Caden Proctor coming back. Yeah, Caden – how about – have we talked since Caden Proctor's no, uh, surprise? Not. This was uh, amazing. Possibly Caleb Downs. Well, I saw that, but they, they there was some talk about that, and then uh, they got real tight, and they old sphincter, and uh, Ohio State kept putting out pictures of him like doing stuff. So, <laughs> I the 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 thing about it is, um, is it's good to see Proctor coming back. He probably should have never left in the first place. Maybe, you know, concerned about what was going to be the world after Nick Saban, but the the boars come in. It was all homesickness. You think it was homesickness? I think so, for the most part. Yeah. I mean, you know, they were calling him, texting him during the football season last year. Yeah, yeah, right. But I think it's it's one of those deals you it's like when I left Florida State and Mm -hmm. I got to Alabama, then look. Again, it was nothing about the people. It was, I mean, it, it was about the infrastructure at the, at the school. I mean, when I got you tried to, Alabama, to go back, didn't you? <laughs> when I got to Alabama, it was like, Jesus. I mean, this is like the Taj Mahal. Oh. You know, I mean, <laughs> you're getting food all the time. You're getting, you know, you get a massage, whatever. I mean, whatever yeah, right. you want. They gave you the crap. I was legs. coming from, you know, you're getting, 
you're getting a protein shake out of a right, right. beat up ice chest. Yeah, <laughs> did you hear what I said? They gave you the crab legs. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to. You got them for free. <laughs> they were just something you served. Well, Caden Proctor, when a, when he left and went to Iowa, he started getting milkshakes out of a beat up ice chest. I was like, oh, I missed where I was at. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah. And, and, and his guy and his guys and stuff. I I, I thought that was awesome, man. I, I could, I honestly, I couldn't believe it when I saw it was happening. I, as, I, enough so that I didn't want to put a video out on my channel because I was like, man, I, I just, is this real? No, you, know, yeah. you don't want to get that one wrong, you know? Oh, yeah. It's so, I mean, it, it, it's just so weird, the, the rules. I mean, <laughs> to transfer twice within six months is like, you can just do it. what are we doing? Well, you make a mistake and you can fix it real quick. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad. Look, I'm glad he's back. It's just the rules so mind-boggling that that's even possible. Yeah, but. well, the the board and company, man, like they're winning over – they they're ha the pra practices are like where 70 recruits show up for some of them and – you know, it's a real open environment and, and that's great. Um, I, I feel like like people really have taken to Kalen DeBoer. No, I, think I think people so really too. like him. No, I think so too. Uh, uh, let me, I think we're going to be really good next year. And again, I stand by the, hey, I'll be, even if we only win nine games, you know, I, I, we got to have time. But I just, man, I, I love, uh, Kane Womack and I'm I'm feeling really good about what I'm hearing about Kalen DeBoer. It'd be cool if there was a Kalen DeBoer statue outside already. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like sorry Nick, move over. <laughs> Kalen DeBoer. So Saturday is part of the recruiting, and I didn't know this at the time, but uh, there was a tweet that went out, and it was Scott Cochran, and it was like he's back home. Now I didn't realize his son is a uh, defensive back prospect for 2026. I, though, was really happy to see him back. And I know that there, you know, he obviously had some time off to deal with personal issues at Georgia and came back and then Kirby fired him. I'm, I'm sure a lot of that had to do with money and trying to pay all these other coaches. You know him personally. I liked him just because I think he would be a great ambassador so I put a story out. Hey, what do you guys think? And it, it was a mixed bag. Uh, but you know him personally. Uh, I mean, I think it'd be great for Alabama if he was back. I mean, the the collective's name is, I mean, it's Yeah, Alabama. Oh, you're saying he would be perfect for the collective. Nothing would be better than having Coach Yeah coming in and, and you know, raising money. I didn't money even think about collective. that. Dude, that is he a great. He wanted something to, something to do while he's, you know, figuring things out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Did you ever get those yes directed at you? Yeah, got a lot more than a yeah directed at me. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's he's one of the best. You guys love I've, him. Oh, he's one of the best people I've ever I've ever met in or out of football. I think he's uh he's just a guy that you can trust, stand by him. I mean, he's gonna have your back, and there's no doubt about it. Um. You know, I, I was talking to somebody earlier earlier today about Coach Cochran. And, uh, I mean, you, you know, I think anybody that's in that follows college football at all knows he had his struggles. And that, I mean, hell, I know a lot of good people that have had their own struggles and right. change who you are, or what kind of person you are. And, uh, I think he just needs time to, to get back to where he feels he can be successful and be a good um i guess a beacon for his family um and not to say he ever was not that uh maybe he just you know needs to uh get back where he wants to be but um I, i've always loved coach cochran you know no matter what's going on i'll always if he calls i'll answer and i'll do whatever i i can to help him or do do anything i can for him he's just one of those guys that stands by his players and when he you know, when he tells you something when he's around, you know, he cares and, and means it. So was that, was it Ryan and Shank that said they were at his house and busted through one of the walls wrestling at a barbecue? Uh, that was, uh, I think that was coach, that was coach Pruitt's house. Oh, it's coach Pruitt's house. <laughs> oh man. Got a little confused there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wrong house. It, it probably happened at coach. Cocker's it could have happened too. there too. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I just think like the, the guy got so he he got it. They did a special on 60 Minutes about him, mm -hmm. and and you you get up that high, and then you know maybe it's like a step back could be doing something that you enjoy doing, being part of a program. I think he, they, it, and I don't even know, that's not why he was there Saturday, but I'm just looking at it as an opportunity. And like, I figured like alumni relations would be a good job for him. I think it'd be great. You know, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to speculate too much. I just, uh, I think he's one of those guys that would do, be very good at whatever he did. He, he's always been a coach. Maybe it'd be cool to s step over into a different right. role and yeah. figure things out. And I mean, if he was a part of the collective, I can't even imagine how much money he'd raise. You know, walking into a room, he'd dominate it. Everybody loves him. Uh, I mean, on my recruiting visit, my mom, my dad, you know, stepdad, my wife everybody fell in love with him like that yeah i mean you just what you see is what you get and that's you know you get that feeling as soon as you meet him and it proved to be true after i was playing for him i mean uh nothing but an asset yeah and so uh when i saw that picture i mean i've 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 texted him he, he hadn't he hadn't answered yet but and he may not but uh I just said, tell me you're coming home. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this? <laughs> no, that'd be great, man. I, I I think it was cool seeing him there and not, you know, not being at Georgia anymore. But the, and then the other part of it is, um, it's just the success that Alabama is having with Kalen DeBoer. Um, it's, it really is. It's phenomenal. I mean, who would have thought, that Nick Saban would walk away and that the program would still find a way to, to have this type of momentum. Now we haven't gotten into games. You said you expect them to be good. Biggest concern is going to be that secondary, you know, with all of those players that went to the NFL and then obviously transferred to a bunch of places, Auburn, Ole Miss, uh, you know, Georgia and, um, Ohio State, you know, we're going to have to replace those guys. But oh, yeah. you'll, you'll have that transfer portal that opens up two I days after gonna, the 8A game. Uh, from what I, I, from what we've seen so far, I mean, there's got – they seem to have a plan in place, and I would imagine they kind of know where they're going to go. And they probably already have been to where they know they're going to get players. Um, so I think they've got a pretty good plan in place. The, yeah. The key thing is depth. I mean, we're going to have talent back there. It's just – if a guy goes down, you know, or late in the game, you need need another set of legs. I mean, you got to have more than just your, you know, your two corners, two safeties, and your nickel. Yeah, right. You know, you got to have some depth back there. So, I, man, I, I think they they got it figured out. I, I just you're, com you're comfortable. Seen, you're comfortable and confident is what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, for this year, I mean, building a. a I think they've got a solid foundation, but it's still first year in kind of makeshift getting, you know, used to this Alabama standard and, and, uh, and trying to put together a team that'll make it for the first year, mm -hmm. um, which I, I think we're going to be pretty good. But again, year one, you never know. What's it like going through like the spring practice? Uh, it's not as bad as camp. Uh, there's the excitement there, but then, you know, you practice again for, I think it's what, three weeks against the same guys over and over and over and over again. Uh, you know, week one's pretty exciting week two, you know, you start, everybody starts fighting each other and then mm -hmm. week three, it's like, all right, we got the game, chill out. Yeah. Right. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, it's hell when you're there, it's, it's all, you got tunnel vision. It's you know, what do I have to do this day? Get it done. Move on to the next day. Right, you know? right, 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 right. And uh, I wish that I had had a little bit more uh, insight into, into how much fun I should have been having rather than just, all right, let's knock this out. Keep it going. I wish mm -hmm. I'd have enjoyed it and taken it in more, but. Well, it's hard when you're in the moment. I mean, think about you. You're over there trying to win a spot. You oh, know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's right. a lot of stress in that. 
um, it would have been a lot more comfortable if you would have just known going in, Hey man, so I got this job and you know, I got, I don't have to worry about winning it. Yeah. It'd have been nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Last thing for this, this episode of elephant in the room. And I want to tell you guys this first off that we're brought to you by my bookie, my bookie uh, use the promo code next round to get up to 50% price match on a thousand dollars. Uh, so you can do with that what you will. And if you need any help, check out Lance's Lock. Our friend Lance Taylor, Lance's Lock, Lance'sLock.com, getting you all of the information that you need to make those choices a little bit easier. And that's Lance's Lock and Lance'sLock.com. All right. Um, Alabama is going to play the hardest schedule I ever remember seeing in 2025. I don't think there's ever been a schedule like that. Uh, they play at Florida State, which we, we should probably go. Um, that would be fun. Be we fun. could arrange that. Yeah. Might maybe, you know, you might be able to pull some strings down there. Uh, you got, you got a, a game, I don't know, it's a cupcake game. Then you got, um, you got Wisconsin. Then you got, another like another cupcake and i think like one of them's like uh the the uh warhawks you know you know uh louisiana monroe lost to them tony romo school it's like northern Ill michigan or eastern northern illinois northern illinois or something or is it i don't know I whatever it was michigan. i don't know and then uh i don't have it i should probably pull it up because now you, i'm gonna i think it was northern illinois but anyway then you gotta go you got you got lsu oklahoma Tennessee Texas. at home at ten at, at Georgia and at Auburn at South Carolina and at Missouri. I mean, there will be no such thing as an undefeated schedule ever again with that kind of, I mean, with that kind of competition, especially in college football, Eastern Illinois. Okay. Eastern Illinois. Okay. Uh, I mean, no way you win all those games. I mean, do, this do year's play Vandy. Tough. Do play Vandy at home. Yeah, the home, the home SEC schedule: LSU, Oklahoma, Tennessee, and Vanderbilt. At Auburn, at Georgia, at Missouri, at South Carolina, Florida State, and Wisconsin. I mean, that's crazy. I'm glad to see it, though. You know, you're excited. About I'm this. glad to see it. Um, I mean, as long as everybody else has to play tough schedules. Well, next and year, the way that the these power conferences are going, right? Um, I mean, it sounds like everybody will now. The SEC is going to be tougher still than than any other conference, mm -hmm. Big Ten, any other conference out there. But uh, I can't wait. I mean, the last couple of years, really. I mean, you got to agree. You felt like a lot of weeks were off weeks. Well, and, and what I said too is, is hosting the Bama tailgate show, you know, like, like doing that. Yeah. Having a good schedule <laughs> makes it a lot easier to do that job. Yeah. Right. So, so next year, and we've talked about this, but it's, um, uh, Western Kentucky, which is, you know, not a bad non-conference game, uh, USF. You know, I mean, they're cupcake, they're not cupcakes, but they're not, you know, premier, but yeah. And Tuscaloosa at Wisconsin, which is a good one. Georgia at home, at Vandy, South Carolina at home, at Tennessee, Missouri at home, off week, at LSU, Mercer. I didn't even know they had a team, except we played them that one time and they cut block Will Anderson. At Oklahoma and then Auburn at home. I mean, that's a – That's a tough road schedule. That's a tough schedule too, but it's not as tough as 2025 when no. you add the, the Florida <clears throat> State in there. So you're getting rid of uh, – you know, you're getting rid of your U USF is, game. Is that week one? Yeah. That's awesome. Think about all the hype that's going to go into this. Oh, my gosh. Especially if Florida State has a good year next year. Yeah. I mean, and then if you could find somebody who played for both programs and won a championship <laughs> in both places and have them as part of your show, <laughs> the insight that you could get. <laughs> I mean, is, that a, is that a neutral site game or is that home or No, away? no. We're, I mean, we're going there. Oh yeah, yeah, you just said that. Yeah, Jeez. like I mean, like we're gonna go. There's a guy that rides around on a horse with a flaming arrow. He throws it, it down. Is pretty cool. I've seen it before in person, like not like you, but I mean, I was at a game once 
when Ralph Regan took Maryland there and Bobby Bowden was on the sideline. And it was awesome, man. Like I, I really enjoyed my time at, at uh, Florida state Florida is a great state. place. Yeah. It is fun. It is so much fun. I had a blast there. Mm-hmm. So that'll be, you know, that'll be one of those times where the, the media will be eyeballing you. They'll want they'll want your perspective. So you have you have a whole season to kind of get well, that perspective you ready. Know, it 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 kind of turned from Florida State to uh, well, I mean, we had the playoff mm -hmm. debacle, obviously. Yeah, uh, there was a lot of a lot of media interest there, but uh, really, it turned into whenever Alabama played A and M, you yeah. know, because Jimbo was around. Uh, God, it's hard to believe neither one of my coaches are coaching anymore. Yeah, yep, yep. Yeah, I it. mean, Jimbo will probably coach again, but uh, I doubt it. I think he's going to cash that check eventually. You think be so? A, be an analyst? Yeah, call yeah. It a day. Yeah, he'll. Well, I think he'll be on TV or something. Yeah, but uh, but anyway, yeah. So that's the schedule that came out, and that's what we're looking at right now. So a lot of hype. But this coming season is going to be great, and the next season is going to hey, be man. incredible. I love it. Let's keep playing the tough games. Yeah. Let's let's treat football like Nate Oates treats basketball. Yeah. Well, you Anytime, can now. anywhere. Now you can because yeah. you can actually lose. And then um, the, the the last thing on today's episode, uh, they they announced that they're going from twelve to fourteen teams already. So twenty twenty six, you're adding two more teams. What do you think? I mean, why not just. Let's just do an NCAA tournament. Let's you know have, it's coming. Have January Madness. What about these guys that uh, that say like I I, I saw where uh, uh, Andy Kennedy, the UAB coach, was in favor of expanding the NCAA tournament for basketball, and I'm like, if you can't get in at 64, oh now we're at 68. I, I mean, mean, you don't belong in. I'm well, sorry. Plus, I mean, you already don't know. I mean, how many teams do you want to have? Yeah, you already don't know half the teams in it. They're just trying you know? to save their jobs, though, like because they because you think like you, you make the tournament, it's a huge resume. Yeah, builder. right, right. It's like, oh, look, I made like I made the turn like Alabama women's basketball has won like been to the tournament three times in eleven years or something. Yeah, they made it this year. They they there's no chance they're going to win anything. They won the first game, but they're not winning a championship. They're not getting to Sweet Sixteen. They're just not and. But it's like, well, when we're back at the table next year with the same coach and the same, you know, it's like, well, we made the tournament, you know? Yeah. It's like, yeah, but I mean, you should make the tournament. I mean, you should make it more than three times in 11 years. I mean, I'm sorry. You just should. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, well, maybe at other places, but you got all these resources. Yeah. <laughs> they're spending, they said they're spending $200,000 a kid. <laughs> for, you know, like. <laughs> you hear you that? Need to get some eyeballs too. Yeah, right. Like so. I mean, you know, like how 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 big are we going to expand this thing? the The problem that that I've had with the the college football expanded stuff is that the regular season has been a tournament. It, it has been a playoff. It's not anymore. And the bad part about it is that we were always like in search of perfection or as close to it. Yeah. And that's not the case anymore. I mean, you just said that, how, you know, how long is now it's about just you playing tough games and get, let's get in. How long is the playoff going to last the playoff? Like from first round to championship well, month and a half, I guess. I mean, I, and I'm not opposed to having more games, but, but are you going to cut down the regular season or are we just going to keep that's adding what games? Say. What, what are we going to do here? I mean, I mean you're going to end up playing. 12 well i guess it'll be like an nfl schedule if i mean the regular season plus the playoffs will be about like an nfl schedule right if you make it all the way yeah yeah and 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 like i saw where um espn paid all that money to buy the playoffs and stuff and it's like you know how does you're expanding this don't start crying when you got to pay the players for these extra games oh yeah because you know, it, it is kind of bull crap that you know you guys have turned this into uh this huge industry. I mean, 14 team. I just, 14 I thought eight would be but but, the, but it's gonna turn into you know that's gonna turn into 64 teams or something. Like they're gonna push for that because every single school is gonna want to get in there just to save their ass. And it's like look the 
four teams. This is the this year and last year were the first time that four teams were actually good in a tournament. Yeah. In college football. There's normally it was like three two. teams and de- right. Two, two good teams. There was a third outlier that yes. you know kind of belong there. Well, the third the third seed would a lot of times be the second best or first best team. Right. They but they the lost the game, the right? Yep. Yep. But it's always been the I mean, there's been two teams usually, and yeah. really one, I mean, that everybody right. knew. Mm-hmm. And so now it's like, oh, well, we gotta have Ole Miss. Look, Ole Miss, you got you got I don't know if you saw it, but you got boat raced by Georgia. Like, and you lost Alabama. Like, you don't belong in there. Yeah. Maybe this year you will, but you didn't last year. Sorry. It would, it, the same thing would have happened if you'd have played uh, any yeah. of the teams in there. And now we're going to have to put all of you guys in because now I say that. And then the one thing that I will disagree with myself on is, and Mike Leach kind of won me over. He's like, he's like, what level of football doesn't end with a tournament? And I'm like, okay, you're right about that. High school tournament, right? Pee wee football tournament, uh, NFL tournament, and then you get to college and it's like we don't have a tournament, you know. But but what made college great though was the regular season mattered so much. Yeah, and plus, I mean, football's not like a uh, football's not like basketball. Basketball to me, if a team shows up and shoots the hell out of the free ball, mm-hmm. then they they can upset anybody. Football, I mean, at some point. You know, I mean, if you're more physical, if you're physically dominant over your opponent, you're going to win at a very high clip, and mm-hmm. it's hard to upset somebody in football. Yeah. I mean, things have to really be going against you to lose. Right. Turnovers, you know, a lot of self-inflicted issues. Yeah. Uh, I mean, basketball is just a completely different game than football. So, I I, I mean, again, you can, usually you can just watch – watch a handful of teams and know who the best team is i mean uh, i know it happens but on a consistent basis you know which teams are the best Mm -hmm. well i agree and um had fun man because it's a good good show um i feel like this next show (laughs) when we preview alabama north carolina the most basketball centric show we've ever had I'm ready good. for that one. And we got football. We'll be talking football. I mean, who knows? Uh, Alabama just continues to to uh, to nail down big recruits. And, you know, we'll get into that as well. But um, great seeing you again in person, you know. And, yeah. and, and I'm, I, I'm Always waiting. better in person. It is. It is. And, and, and then also, where's Ryan and Shane? I know. Ryan texted me last week. I got to get back with him. Maybe maybe Wednesday we'll, we'll get him. Wednesday we'll or see Thursday. Him. How about Shank? Did we win Shank's uh, – a raffle that we put money into we probably did and it's probably in shank's bank account right now. <laughs> 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 uh, well, hopefully we'll see we'll see him soon to ask him. <laughs> hey guys thanks for hanging out with us uh comment section please tell us what you're thinking about the basketball or the football season or schedule. Uh, That's Jake Coker. I'm Mick Gillespie. Our show, again, brought to you by Lance's Lock, lanceslock.com. As college football uh, cranks back up, he's got your help there. Also, obviously, the tournament's going on in basketball. They cover that and the NBA. Uh, Major League Baseball is getting going as well. So all of that at Lance's Lock. And don't forget, mybookie.ag brings you the show uh, each and every week. We try to do it twice a week. Mybookie.ag use the promo code next round to get up to 50% price match to a thousand dollars. And I told you I got a big sexy Elmo did it and won. So he was down and then he came roaring down back. to his last 20. He came roaring back. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with us and roll tide. Roll tide.